Fox Business decided to go after Jamal Bowman, who won his race against Elliot Engel. Um, and you can tell they don't quite know what to do with this yet. They're testing out their lines of attack, and they trot out Biden. Elliot Engel is the long-serving congressman from New York. In Tuesday's primary, he was challenged by a young man with no political experience at all. The challenger is leading. Engel may lose, and that has significance way beyond New York. That's because Jamal Bowman, the challenger, is a socialist. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is a very prominent supporter. Bowman wants Medicare for all, the Green New Deal, and he wants to defund police departments. If he becomes Congressman Bowman, the far left gets even stronger, and the Democrat split gets a lot more obvious. Old line establishment Democrats supported Engel. Look at them. Hillary Clinton, Senator Schumer, Speaker Pelosi. They all lined up behind the 73-year-old incumbent. A trio of big hitters desperate to avoid another challenge to their authority within the party. The old guard is being pushed further and further to the left, and they don't like it. I think, uh, uh, just, just think for a second, what this means for Joe Biden's candidacy. He's very much the old guard, but he's got to come up with policies that attract the young upstarts. AOC, and if he wins, Congressman Bowman. They will have a role in formulating those policies. They're pulling left. How does Joe accommodate the socialists while holding on to the moderates? Joe Biden isn't moving left. He isn't moving anywhere. He's not leaving the basement. But if he did move left, that would be wonderful. That would be great. Now, he's not going to do it, but it would be great if he did. See, here's the paradox, the conundrum that the right is in, in these situations. They always cried wolf when it was Nancy Pelosi, Obama, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton. They hit them with, oh my God, you're a Marxist, you're a socialist, and all that stuff up front. Now you have left-wing candidates, in this case Jamal Bowman's a democratic socialist, and they have only the same attacks that they used against the other establishment Democrats. And then the other thing is, they're now forced to, they try to make a boogeyman out of these left-wing candidates. But then when the left-wing candidates talk, they, you know, they start, they talk about Medicare for all, and they talk about Green New Deal and infrastructure spending and a jobs program and a living wage and ending the wars. And so then the right is put in a position where they are taking on those issues head on. They're openly arguing against stuff like a living wage. And then they'll get more and more unpopular. You see the paradox and you see the conundrum in their mind. They think like, OK. I get to attack they use uh, I get to attack these new lefty candidates, these new lefty politicians, beat up on them like they're my piñata. But you're actually making yourself look less popular because you're openly arguing against ideas that are wildly popular. So in they're walking, it's almost like they're walking right into a trap and they don't know it. They don't know how to handle the left because what they're used to is Guys like Joe Biden and the corporate Democrats who really are moderate Republicans and they always work the Republicans and they always give them what they want. And Joe Biden is always conceding and conceding and conceding and never making a left wing case because he's not on the left. So they're used to dealing with that. They're used to beating up on people who really stand for nothing and believe in nothing. So... All the arguments against somebody like Joe Biden stick more, especially when, he, you know, he's got all the personal corruption sc scandals and Hunter Biden and all that stuff. And it's so easy to go after Joe Biden. It's so easy to go after Hillary Clinton. And half the stuff they say makes sense. But they don't have anything really to go after the young left candidates. And so they'll call them Marxist. They'll call them socialist. They'll argue against their policies, but their policies are really popular. So it's not. It's going to hurt the right. And so this is why, you know, people like me have been chopping at the bit and I can't wait for more of this to start happening, more of these left candidates to win because 
then you see the real battle that we've been waiting for, which is, all right, let's actually have that discussion. Let's put the right-wing ideas against the left-wing ideas, people who actually respectively believe in both, and let's see what happens. I think we're going to win that debate the overwhelming majority of the time, unless there's a flawed messenger, or unless the, they don't really believe in it and they were kid joking or they were, you know, covering up the fact that they're not that far left. But if you have an actual discussion and a debate between the right-wing ideas and the left-wing ideas, the left-wing ideas are going to win. So they don't realize how easy they've had it. For decades, Republicans have had it so easy because they just beat up on these corporate Democrats because they don't believe in anything. It's almost like they're paid to lose. But now you have some real lefty candidates and the right has already used up all the arguments and cried wolf and called Joe Biden a Marxist and he's not that. Um, so it rings hollow when they go against the left and say that. But then also when they openly argue against the policies of the left, well, good luck with that because that you're not going to fare too well now, are you? So you could tell there's a little bit of... They don't know what to do exactly at Fox News. They made... They created an industry out of bashing AOC. And everybody was acting like her primary challengers like would give her a run for her money. She won with like over 70% of the vote. So the more they attack the left, honestly, quite often they look ridiculous. There are some times that they come out, you know, looking fine if, if somebody on the left says something goofy and maybe gets too deep into identity politics and makes a fool of themselves. I mean, that happens from time to time, but the overwhelming majority of the time, if the left-wing people are just talking about the bread and butter issues and the right attacks them, you're only making them more popular. So, um, they're going to keep doing this. And by the way, this strategy against Biden is just so sad. It's not going to work. Trump's doing the same thing. He's trying to, they're trying to tie Biden to the far left. And, you know, Trump's trying to tie him to all the people pulling down the statues and Antifa and everything. And it's like, if I had to come up with a strategy that I could guarantee you would not work for the Republicans, it would be that. It would be that. He's, all the positive things about his campaign in 2016, where he destroyed Hillary, that, talking about NAFTA and outsourcing jobs and the Iraq war, and she's the establishment and she's corrupt, all that stuff, that's gone now. Now the arguments are about, you know, the fake news media is so mean to me, Oh my God, let's talk about statues for an hour and a half. And Joe Biden is Antifa. And it's like, that's obviously that's not going to work, but they're, they're in that bubble. They think it's going to work. So they don't really know exactly what the hell they're doing, but they're pushing forward with this. And it's just a sad strategy, man. It's really sad. So, you know, my response to it is, please move forward. It's making our lives a lot easier.